Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Welch from the Dartmouth Institute of Health Policy and Clinical Practice. I'm the co-author with Dr. Archie Blyer of the Oregon Health Sciences University of the recent paper on screening mammography in the New England Journal of Medicine. Because it sparked a fair amount of controversy, in this video I'd like to explain our findings to the general public. Before I do, a little background on screening. There are two prerequisites for screening to lower cancer mortality. First, screening must advance the time of diagnosis of cancers destined to cause death. In other words, it has to find them earlier. And second, early treatment of cancers destined to cause death must confer some advantage over late treatment. I'm not going to concern myself with that prerequisite because our paper is really about the first. Screening must advance the time of diagnosis of cancers destined to cause death. It's not enough simply to find more early stage cancer. There must also be a subsequent decline in those diagnosed with late stage cancer. In other words, if we were finding breast cancer early, we would be seeing less breast cancer at a late stage. So here's what an effective screening program should do. Imagine early stage cancer starts about here, late stage cancer starts about here. This is about their relative positions in breast cancer. You initiate screening, you expect over time to start finding more and more early stage cancer. But at the same time, you expect to see less and less late stage cancer. So if you add the two curves together, the overall amount of cancer is constant. Screening shouldn't cause cancer. So back to our paper, which is really asking the question, so what has actually happened following the introduction of screening mammography in the United States? Here is the stage-specific incidence of breast cancer in women age 40 and older in the United States. These are federal data from 1975 to 2008. And that's what happens to the amount of early stage cancer. It goes up dramatically. It doubles. And the National Health Interview Survey has been tracking mammography use in women age 40 and older in the United States. And I'll superimpose that graph here, the proportion of this population that's been screened with a mammogram over the past two years. As you can see, in 1985-87, a little under 30% of the population was screened. That went up to about 50%, 60%, and then settled in at about 70% of the population age 40 and older undergoing screening mammography. So that's our first finding, that following the introduction of screening mammography in women age 40 and older, the number of women diagnosed with early stage breast cancer has roughly doubled. So here's the picture, a lot more early stage disease. Here's late stage disease. As you can see, it's gone down a little bit, but not much. And that's our second finding. There has been little compensatory decrease in the number of women presenting with late stage breast cancer. So here's the picture. A lot more early stage, but not much change in late stage cancer. Is there some other reason for this? Well, we thought we'd look at the stage-specific incidence of breast cancer in women under age 40 in the United States. This is a group not exposed to screening. Their early stage is flat. Their late stage is flat. It's gone up a little bit. It's tiny. And that's our third point. There's been little change in the rate of breast cancer among women under age 40 suggesting there has not been a dramatic change in the underlying amount of breast cancer, that the extra breast cancers we're seeing are a consequence of screening. Now this imbalance between a lot more early stage and not much change in late stage suggests two things. First, screening mammography largely fails the first prerequisite for a successful screening program. And second, screening mammography is associated with a substantial amount of overdiagnosis. 
Overdiagnosis is the detection of a cancer that was otherwise never going to appear. So there's all these extra cases of early stage disease and just a small deficit in late stage disease. What are all those other cases? Even after excluding the transient excess incidence associated with hormone replacement therapy and correcting for the tiny increase in incidence observed in women under age 40, we estimate that about 1.3 million women have been overdiagnosed. Who are these extra early stage cancers? Well, there are really two components to it. The first is DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, which before mammography started in the 75 to 80s, virtually not detected. But notice the increase also involves localized invasive cancer. And that's our final finding. The overdiagnosis of early stage breast cancer is not simply ductal carcinoma in situ. About half are localized invasive breast cancers. Now there is good news. The breast cancer death rate is falling. But the good news is about treatment, not screening. Why do we say that? Well first, screening mammography has had little effect on the rate at which women are diagnosed with late stage cancer. What was that little effect on late stage cancer? Let's look at late stage a little bit more carefully and I'm going to change the y-axis so we can see it a little bit better. Well part of late stage is so-called regional disease which in breast cancer is largely axillary node positive cancer and that's where the changes have been. By and large we can treat these women successfully so it's not clear how much benefit there was from taking a few women out of this category into local disease. On the other hand, the rate of metastatic breast cancer has not changed at all. And this is the group who would really benefit from an advance in their time of diagnosis. These are the cancers we would like to be finding early, but we're not. So the rate at which women present with metastatic cancer, a stage that's extremely difficult to treat, sadly appears not to have been affected by screening. We also noted that the decline in deaths among women exposed to screening, age 40 and older, is about the same as the decline in women not exposed to screening, under age 40. That suggests it's not about screening, it's about treatment. That's why we say the good news in breast cancer is about improved treatment, not screening. Now our best guess is the mortality benefit of screening mammography is small, less than a 10% decline in breast cancer mortality. On the other hand, the overdiagnosis harm is substantial. Approximately half of screen detected breast cancers now represent overdiagnosis. Important caveat. These data say nothing about the value of diagnostic mammograms. When a woman with a breast lump gets a mammogram to learn if it's something to worry about. There's no debate about mammography here. We all agree diagnostic mammography is a good thing. So by bottom line, these data represent serious concerns about the value of screening mammography. They clarify that the mortality benefit is likely smaller and the harm of overdiagnosis likely larger than has been previously recognized. While women should recognize this work does not answer the question, should I be screened for breast cancer, they can rest assured that the question has more than one right answer.